Well, recently, Ashley Thompson revealed a stunning watercolor painting that she created. Uh, though watercolor produces rich and vivid art, mastering the medium can be quite tricky, which is why we invited a talented local artist to share her expertise with us today. Natalie Sorensen will explain the unique nature of watercolor paints and how they can be used to your advantage. So whether you're a beginner looking to try watercolors for the first time or a seasoned painter hoping to brush up your watercolor skills, this segment has a lesson or two for you, and I'm excited. Thank you for catering to my latest uh, adventure. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. You're Thank quite you. the artist. I'm so <laughs> impressed. Yes. I mean, it's I can learn a lot. So let's talk <laughs> about some of the essentials for watercolor that you need, too, because I kind of started out just going kind of cheap on things. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but some of the materials can matter. Mm -hmm. Materials really do matter, more so in watercolor than probably any other medium that I can think of. Wow. The paper in particular makes all the difference. You can use pretty inexpensive brushes and pretty right off the shelf paints, but if you have um, arches, yeah, that's watercolor paper, okay. mm. it's it's forgiving, It um, yeah, it's forgiving. Well, you can I think do that's, so much. that's key because one of the things I say that, scare, that said it scares me about watercolor is that it feels unforgiving because mm -hmm. once the color's there, it's there. It and I know uh, But you, with the right paper, well, it's not. I'm really happy to hear you say that because usually the thing that people are afraid of is the, the wild, un, you never know what's going to happen with watercolor. Oh, I'm yes. used to him and I never know what's going to happen there no. either. <laughs> so you're used to that. Good point. <laughs> Okay, so you have uh, some technique to show us though. We have, yes, a very simple wet wash technique okay. and you've each been set up, you have a larger brush and a smaller brush. Okay. And mm -hmm. you each have a sheet of wa Arches watercolor paper in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're in a kind of dry uh, environment, not so much in your studio I mean, but in the yeah. up, up north here, it's usually drier than most places. Sure. I would invite you to just wet the section and you can use this big Bench, juicy one okay. if you want. And is this, I was reading, I was, try, I was trying to like teach myself to watercolor paint and I read techniques like wet on wet versus wet yes. on dry. And so this is So we're going to do wet on wet. Okay. Wet on wet. Okay. Then I'd like you to use your larger brush and dip in the turquoise. Okay. Okay. We're going to work pretty quickly. You're going yeah. to dab around. You can make strokes or just let it bleed. Probably a couple splashes of that. And then switch to your smaller brush and use the lime green. I think it's just a nice combination. You'll see right away how it does some exciting things. Mm. You can play around a while. I wouldn't agonize. Wow. The best things that happen are when you don't overwork. I yeah. was kind of reading too that there can be a difference if you push the color in or you try to pull the color out and what yeah, you're sure. like kind of going for when you're doing kind of wet on wet. There are some specific things that do help or get in your way and so that is true. Right now this one's pretty free. Okay. So make sure you have some kind of intense pockets some of intense color pockets possible. Of color. Okay. And then okay. while it's still pretty drippy, Mitchell, I'd like you to grab a pinch of salt Sure. And Ashley, take the drips of alcohol, okay. and I myself am going to be using rice, and sprinkle it around however you Break feel. on the actual... Make sure there's some puddles, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get some more puddles on mine first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> puddles are good. <laughs> okay. okay. Now and now I'm going to do a little alcohol? Yeah, just a few drops. You can maybe five drops at the most. But when it hits, it'll be kind of exciting. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is neat how that works. It's totally on its own. You have no idea what's going to happen, but it's yeah. a lot of fun. <clears throat> I, okay. Now, if, this, if they want to take a look at what's happening, you might be able to tilt up a little because it's yeah. interesting how the paints kind of pull around the porous material and you can do this with a lot of different things also sure. with crumpled up paper and things like that so is there any any difference to the rice versus the salt in terms of like a chemical thing or is it all just in the porous nature of the material because al alcohol feels like a chemical thing to me so this is one that's dry and oh. so at this stage you just scrape off the salt oh. or rice and yes, there's a difference, but it's not a chemical thing. It's just a soaking it up differently kind of thing. So it leaves a bit of an imprint behind Sorry. it. You know. <laughs> That's fine. So it leaves yes. um, that behind after you uh, rub off the rice or the yeah. salt. I get it. And it's so wonderfully frosty. 
So yeah. often I work pretty small in watercolor and that lends itself to making little greeting cards. Oh, cool. So we've got to it, let it go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now how do you take the color back out? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's watch do it. this. Okay. This, is, this is truly amazing and this is unique to Arch's paper. So you okay. need a wet brush. Okay. You need a, something that you want to take away. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you like to take away? Anything. I just want to see how it works. I want like. So let's try. Let's say here. Oh, it's so harsh there. It's a harsh line. Let's see. So first, it's going to look a little worse. That's what you have to be and ready for too, right? Oh. You have to be ready for like it's going to be worse. I say this about Before making it. caramel too. It's yeah. going to look like it's not good. So look you at get that. you get friendly oh. with your whatever dabber you have. And but you, you can, can pull the color back out. About to about 95%, I think. And you're saying that's pretty close. That, that's because mostly the paper. It, because the paper can withstand it. Should we d I did, sorry, I didn't bring anything yeah, I can I demonstrate on that will show the other side. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I, you can see how. That's super interesting quickly. because I really have been daunted. It's been daunting to me that I, well, I didn't put the color there and I don't want it. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Right. So it's very forgiving. I like that. That's really interesting. Right. Do we have time that. for one more? Yes, no. really quick. We have less than, about a minute, about a minute. Okay, well, we can just talk about it too. Okay. Another sure. way you can um, work with wet washes is to do a wet wash on uh, same idea that you did mm -hmm. and then crunch it down with plastic wrap. Oh, okay. And it comes up with something that looks like this. Nice. Which on its own is kind of like, well, what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, it, Super organic. Right. I just love that about it. And so if you think I'm going to give myself a, a problem to do a negative wow. uh, interpretation of yep. that. Here I've done, you know, like a rose and some leaves. That is so cool. And just adding a third color. That to is do really the cool. negative. That is. Look, well, so the world's my oyster. I can't believe how fast the time went now. <laughs> Thank go. you for your tips. Thank you so much. I'll send yes, you a progress report. Oh, good, good. <laughs>